One thing that is key in my game is the ability to change the color of the sprite. So I'm going to talk quickly today about how I went about doing that and just show you some of the options you have. So if you look here, I have a scene, I have a sprite, and then two texture recs, which are essentially the canvas version of a sprite, or can be the canvas version of a sprite anyway. Two of them are white, one of them is gray, we'll get to that in a moment. But if I run this right now, I'm gonna get different colors. I'm gonna get red, and if I look at my code on this, right here, I have color sprite, modulate, and then color red. So I am modulating everything. But that's one key thing about modulate. The modulate property will modulate everything. So if I only wanted to affect the primary one, I would just say self-modulate because the sprite is color sprite and the texture recs are down below this as variables here. And then we'll get to the timer at the end here. If I go now and run, we're gonna get a red, a gray, and a white. So the others are not being affected, but you'll notice that things looked a little weird on one of those. So I'm gonna go on and change these to red again. Actually, to make them a different color, I'll change these to blue. And so these two should be the same color, right? Well, if we run this, you'll notice the blue for the gray one is a lot darker. So you're adding to the color. You're not replacing the color, you're adding to the color. So if you're really aiming to not have to do some color magic or something like that, you're probably best off leaving your sprites white or potentially even transparent. I don't know how well the transparent would work. I have not tried that and that just occurred to me. You know, if you're good with playing around with this and maybe lightening this, that might be something where ultimately you could do that. So really quick, let's just say texture rect, lighten, and let's just try 0.5. We broke something good. Uh, oh, I forgot to self-modulate. It doesn't really matter on these. This is a, there's no children for this one, so I can just modulate and then lighten, lightened. There we go. So now if I run this, there's not much difference. So apparently that does not affect it the way I was thinking it would. But anyway, so that is not, uh, that is not working. I do have the lightened and the darkened right up here, so you can look at these. I'm going to post all of this to GitHub so you can take a look at the, the link will be in the description. So feel free to check it out and see if you can spot anything else. Uh, as I go down through this though, if I change this one, for example, and I just use this, this is an alternate option. Instead of this color red, you can do color from string and then do black and blue. So if black doesn't exist, or if I misspell it, maybe I just type it like that, then I'm going to get blue. So if I run this now, I'll get blue. If I come back and I actually add the K I need, I will get black. Very simple stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and again, self-modulating here at the top because the children will be affected otherwise. One thing I would want to know, I do want to note is you can also have color sprite self-modulate and then .r.g.b. So you can actually update the individual RGB channels. And we'll run that, I get green now because I've made green one. And if I scroll down here a little bit, you can do the HSV from HSV here. With these numbers, they just need to be below one. The final number here is alpha. And you can also just do HS and V individually out like this. You can also do HSL, but you can't actually update the L directly from what I'm seeing. I don't see another, like I don't see a dot L. So that does not seem possible. Um, once again, you have hue saturation and luminosity i believe it is and then alpha alpha is at the end oh by the way if you also want to manipulate the alpha individually maybe you want to just fade something out that might be a way to potentially do that let's say that i want to change the color of this over the course of time so what we want to do i want to enable this row right here. And if I run this right now, I should get a blue. The bottom two colors don't really matter right now, but that's fine. So as you can see here, I have the star function and you'll notice it's basically saying if it's this color, change it to this. If it's this color, change it to another one and all that. And it's just doing this and it's being called on timer timeout. My timer is set for 0.5 seconds. So it should be plenty of time to see what, what's happening here. I wanna also point out while we're doing this that you can call dot hex, color dot hex to do this. And you can also call just color and then the hex code. You wanna put zero X at the beginning 
And then you want to make sure to add the alpha values at the end. So that's something a little weird compared to like HTML or something like that. Also notice here I have self modulate. From what I can tell, these two, these two rows are the same thing. And it doesn't seem like there's a quote unquote best practice. Uh, based on my research, it seems like either one of these calls are fine. If you prefer this particular method, that's fine. Um, but this one works as well. There is also a get self modulate and modulate without self. There is also one of those. And I found that particularly useful when I was trying to compare colors or something like that. I could have done that down here in this, but I did not. So let's run this. So now you'll notice I'm going blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red. And you know, it's just kind of going through that cycle. One thing I did note here is that if you end up needing to modulate the texture directly for some reason, maybe the modulate property is not directly on your parent node that your script is on, you can do something like this and that could work. Uh, you're probably still best off just grabbing this, uh, grabbing the actual variable here and not worrying about it. It will not work in this particular one. It doesn't really matter. But that is something that I found during my time working on the game was that ultimately it was something where I, I could use texture in some situations if I wasn't seeing the color update like I was expecting it to. I think there's a few things that I still want to try to understand, like if there would be a better way to do, for example, the color switching that I was doing with the star function. And I, I suspect that a shader could do that better than this, but I don't know. And I don't know how to necessarily approach that with a shader. That's something else I'd be curious about, but ultimately it's working right now. And that's what matters. I don't know that I would rely on that color changing effect though. The one kind of downside with this, of course, is that if you're doing it this way, you are pretty limited in the detail that you can show. I would think that you'd almost have to compose your sprite in layers and then export those layers. So maybe you had like a white background. So for example, say you're taking a Mario sprite and instead of giving him a red shirt and a red hat, you gave him a white shirt and a white hat and then had the outline and the other colors that was on, were on him on a different layer. You'd have to export those separately and then combine them in the Godot. I don't know. I feel like there's probably a better way to do this, but it is really nice if you are wanting to allow the player to select something or you're wanting to go with a bit of a random color. But if you're limiting what the player can select, it's often you're probably best off just simply going and creating the individual sprite colors and changing them as needed. If you're looking for more Godot tips, I talk a lot more about how to access nodes in this video. As always, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I will see you next time.